This is Analog Spectrum. Get ready for a verbal beatdown to that overripe honeydew melon you call ahead. Welcome back. This is Analog Spectrum. I am Tony, and I'm with my co-host, Doug. And today, we are going to talk about analog versus digital. Is that correct, Doug? Yeah, it sounds right to me. The... the the audio listening experience right we could even say comparing digital to uh, analog right well and so tony and i were talking about this and i think um the way we're going to approach this is tony is going to take the side of digital and i'm going to take the side of analog and primarily because tony listens to a lot more digital and i listen to a lot more analog so um that is correct. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, probably a logical way to proceed. Yeah, I don't own any. I, I do own some vinyl. <laughs> I have a Wild and Crazy Guy, Steve Martin. Vinyl. <laughs> Grandpa <laughs> bought a rubber. No, that, that was a I That one was not on there. Oh, okay. It was, one of the, it was a wild. Man, can we just start one podcast without going off? And so anyway, we're going to talk about analog versus digital. Yeah. For some reason, they got away, got on recipe for broccolini. Yeah. And how really you don't want to overdo the Parmesan. Yes. So I learned a lot, but I don't know shit about digital. <laughs> Hey, so, man, it's, we are who we are. Exactly. Whatever. Certainly. Um, yeah, so uh, how do we start this? So, well, tell, tell me, uh, tell me. well, why don't you defend, I, I, honestly, I know I'm supposed to be taking the digital, mm-hmm. but I kind of don't have a dog in the hunt. Okay. I, I, uh, I have my opinion. Okay. Right? And, uh, but I would be, uh, and, I, and I did research a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I will tell you right now, I know that there's definitely a, a, a quality dynamic. Mm-hmm. Uh, analog is definitely going to be higher quality. Uh, vinyl is going to be, okay. it has the potential to be higher quality uh, okay. as so, far as the sound. So let's talk about that. Okay. And, and, and so first thing you got to do is define quality. Right. right, and so uh, some people literally enjoy the sound of digital more than they enjoy the sound of analog. Right. So to say that one has a higher quality than the other is kind of it, it's kind of a circular argument because until you define what you like in quality, you, you can't really say sure. that. Does that make uh, sense? Yeah. Well, and again, I, I when it's, when I say you, I'm talking about the you know the collective you, right. not Tony. Well, so. I I think. Um, I kind of make a comparison here that there's some people that freaking like McDonald's French fries, sure. you know, and mm-hmm. there's people that like Pabst Blue Ribbon or, yep. or Budweiser, yep. and that's what that that's where they draw the line. That's what they right. like, you know. Right. And uh, uh, but there there's definitely better food or better beer or uh, uh, well. Uh, subjectively speaking subjectively exactly yeah speaking so that's what I was there's, better, there's so better food or better it, beer or yeah, whatever it, it all right. comes down to that it all all comes down to subjectiveness certainly so here's my thing though you can be as subjective as you'd like and you can say this is better or that's better or whatever i don't buy that until you can tell me why and if your why is oh just because i like it then to me you haven't put enough thought into it or right. you don't care enough about that particular topic to even get into the discussion or whatever, right? So, right. and that's that's not even a bad thing. You're welcome to do that and whatever. Right. On this particular topic, um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I won't say I got a dog in the fight, but I'm passionate about this stuff. Sure. And I don't know why. Um, if I if I had to identify why, I would just say because out of all of the forms of entertainment, music gives me the biggest joy out of right. out of all of it. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, to me, the higher the sound quality or the more um, emotion I can pull from the music through that, through this, the quality of the sound, the better I like it. This is coming from a guy who has docking on vinyl. Hell yeah! <laughs> Rhymes uh, with rocking. Do I, I listen to I, I, I listen to docking on vinyl, and I turn around one time and listen to it. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, it's funny because I, I, <laughs> the, the, the record I know, sales are going to go up because of what we're talking about. Like by one or two. People are going to be like, what? I mean, we will have listeners that are going to be like, well, what Dawkins. the fuck are what they talking Dawkins? about? And, and uh, well, allow us to digress this another moment because we've got time. Yes. Uh, that, uh, that there was a series. There, there, were, there were those upper echelon hair bands in the mm-hmm. 80s mm-hmm. like Poison, Poison or Def mm-hmm. Leppard or mm-hmm. whoever. Motley Crue. Yeah. Motley Crue. Maybe Twisted Sister, I guess. Mm-hmm. But And then there was these B and C level bands mm-hmm. and, and Dokken. Dokken was down there. It was down there. And yeah. they had maybe three albums. They're probably touring right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah 
there was there was a, there was an album. I think and there was a song in there called "Breaking the Chains." That was the one yeah. I remember the most. Yep. yep. And uh, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. It's not horrible. It's not horrible. It's just not great. It's like hardcore uh, dark. He's gonna be like, dark, dark. he's now walking out of the room. Everybody. He's really upset. <laughs> He seems to be very. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, Doc and Rocks. Tony the Button Pusher. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so yeah, so like we were saying, this is all subjective stuff, right? Certainly. And this is the one thing that I I I don't like when people get all righteous about this stuff because to me, listen to it and like it. That's it. I don't care if you got a you're listening to shit on your cell phone, or you have a three hundred thousand dollars stereo system right. whatever you can do listen to it like it and that's it so that's really the bottom line I'm put glad up front. you say that we're probably not going to fight that much so that's well, how i feel too. well so, yeah so at yeah, the so. end of the day that that's the reality of it right? right but what i would say is that the 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 quest that i've been on recently is is i and i didn't even like the terminology they use they call it audiophile which to me that's like snobbish right mm-hmm. and, but there has to be some sort of delineation between just your standard buying a cd and mm-hmm. something of higher quality so um in my in my audiophile quest um i've realized a couple of things there is a difference there is a difference in sound mm-hmm. right and it's just the same thing that people will tell you they can taste a difference in this wine versus that wine and this coffee versus that coffee and so on right? right there is an actual difference now whether you like that difference one way or another is that's where the subjectiveness comes in but mm-hmm. you can't argue the fact that there, there definitely sounds different when you when you have different quality of recordings and different quality of reproduction and so uh, typically what i've discovered is vinyl in or or any form of of analog that's not digitized um, typically sounds a little bit warmer sounds a little bit more natural now this is where it gets kind of weird and difficult because if you play an analog source through a, a, a digitized system you lose some of that. So you, depending on what you have for gear, that could change the way things sound, right? So if you play, for example, if you play a, a CD through a very expensive tube amplifier and very expensive speakers, it'll sound better than any analog record that I play on my cheap-ass system. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of this comes down to equipment. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I've discovered that. Now, here's where... This kind of irks me a little bit to say out loud, but it used to be if you really wanted the high end stuff, you were, you were, I mean, you couldn't spend less than 50 grand. And that's not, I'm not exaggerating. That's, that's kind of a conservative estimate. You couldn't spend less than 50 grand and still get really good high quality sound out of, out of anything. Um, That has come down dramatically in the last 15 years or so, thanks to the Chinese. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, they're making tube amplifiers. Now, of course, they just copycat. That's all mm-hmm. they do. Same thing they do with most of the other stuff. Um, but they're making amplifiers. I just bought one. It should be in next week. Um, and it's 1500 bucks. And most of the audio files, this, this snooty guys, they say uh, it sounds a, as good as $30,000 mm-hmm. amplifiers that you know they're getting from American companies mm-hmm. called Macintosh and whatever. And so I'm very much looking forward to that because I want to know, I want I want to experiment, I want to see like does it really actually make that stuff sound that much better? Do you think? Do you think though, like a I, I in, in kind of back on our original point, I, I I do think that if I were to listen to we like one of my favorite songs on like an iPod mm-hmm. or like on my phone through like like a you know eighty dollar Bluetooth headset, and then I was to listen to the same song on vinyl, you know, uh, through a tube amplifier, very expensive tube amplifier, etc., on really excellent speakers and so forth. I think I would, I think I clearly would notice a difference, you know. But, you know, how how dramatic is the difference, and how incremental is the difference when compared to price? You know what I mean? Like so, and, and convenience. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally yeah, get yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so when you get from, I don't know how to rate the scale. Let's say a hundred percent is perfection. Right, right, and and one percent is uh, uh, Radio Shack, you know, the cheapest. The, the speaker the, on your phone. Yeah, the yeah. cheapest kind of thing. Even phones are 
Pretty stupid. good. They get yeah, better. Get, they're yeah. better than some of those old Radio Shack things. But anyway, right. so let's say that's kind of where we're at on the scale. So <laughs> the Crystal Radio used to make us kids. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So. so between, when you go from there to like 50%, you're you're pretty good. Like it's not very expensive. It's right. it's convenient, and so you can float in that forty to sixty percent range and mm-hmm. still be reasonably priced and still sound reasonably good. Mm-hmm. You can tell a massive difference from sixty percent to ten percent, right? You can right. you can tell when you go from that sixty percent to the eighty percent, it starts to get expensive. Right. Still not out of reach. Like if you really wanted to sacrifice, you could save the money and buy the gear and, and you can do it. And you can tell a difference. It, it's a significant. And, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm trying mm-hmm. to move up to that sort of range. So the, the gear is expensive, but to somebody like me, it's worth it. Right. Then when you get above that, the increments get much smaller and the price goes way higher. Right. And it, it, it gets ridiculous. Um, $17,000 for one speaker. Would right. I spend that because I could tell the difference between that and a one thousand dollars speaker? I probably wouldn't spend that because to me it's not could, worth. Could it. you tell the difference? Yeah, I don't know yeah. because I don't have seventeen grand to spend on right. a speaker. That, that's my concern. Yeah, you, yeah. Well, and you even talk, and, and this is maybe where we get into the debate a little bit. That's the whole. I I did try to do like a little research into uh, to see if there's articles where they've actually done. You know, you know they played a you know played the vinyl record and they oh, they played a vinyl record and they played a digital record. Mm-hmm. Or digital recording, and mm-hmm. you know, a thousand people did comparisons and so right. forth. Uh, yeah, when when you enter into that, and there's not a whole lot of data out there. I don't know why it was so hard to find data on it, but but there are definitely people that will say, yeah, you listen to vinyl, you listen to digital, especially like a lot of the <clears throat> MP3s and so forth. We talked about this that uh, you know you have the compression, compression, uh, you know, obviously impacts the quality of the song uh, mm-hmm. of, of the music. And I and I thought it was interesting that, that when I was when I was researching this. There, there was this phenomenon I've noticed, and I, and I was always like, "What the hell's going on?" And what I, what I noticed is I, I might listen to a older song that was recorded using analog techniques. Let's go to one of our favorites, like Bob Seger. Mm-hmm. I mean, like Bob Seger's one of his earlier albums. I've listened to it, and uh, like in digital, and and it's you know like if you have the volume set like on six, and then the next song comes on, let's say it's a newer digital recording, it's just so much louder, mm-hmm. right? And I'm like, why can't? Why is this Bob Seger song? not as loud as this other song and and that's compression i mean that has a lot to do with compression yep. and 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 so forth and what they're trying to accomplish and uh and that's that frustrated me when i read that i was like huh but uh but i guess you you mean so anyway so the i i totally get that i totally get that you know there's there's environments where you know you're going to want to focus so much on the music and you're, you're going to want to totally appreciate what you're hearing there's other times when I'm driving up to the grocery store, and I just want you know, you know, a good three or four minutes of Ario Speedwagon just right. basically to get me chuffed, so I can go in there and yeah. buy a butternut squash. Right? Yes, yes. So, so, uh, so. Well, uh, so, th- so that's another good point. Is like car audio. Right. It's come a long way. It sure has. Right. It's come a long way, and it's way better than you know when I was growing up. It was the six by nine wars. How many six by nines could you cram in your car? Right. And I had El Camino, and I had six of those bastards behind my seat, you know, and just, it was all about volume, and it sounded like shit, but it was loud, you know. Uh, yeah, Ted Nugent, hibernation, full blast. Uh, say no more, yeah, say no more. <laughs> Are you sure this is Ted Nugent? Yeah, it is. It is. It sounds just like air supply. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So I, I don't, I don't know that there's actually an argument here. To be honest with you, there's right. a comparison, but I don't know if there's an actual argument because so much of it is subjective and so much of it is, like you know, <laughs> you're not going to have your turntable in your car. It just ain't right. happening. So well, it, you mentioned wine. Uh, I I know, uh, and uh, they've had a few movies on sommelier, sommeliers, whatever, sommelier, sommelier, yeah. And uh, thank you. Uh, and they, I remember the first movie I watched about uh, those guys. Don't go there. Huh? Don't go there. Well, they, 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 they you know, when you're, they're trying to get their whatever their, whatever they call it, they become like a certified whatever. Okay, sorry. I thought you were going somewhere else. Good. No, no, no. They're trying to get the certification that they give them like 10 wines. They taste it. And they say, well, you know, like I'm tasting, you know, it tastes like uh, I'm getting hint, hints of tennis ball. Or, mm-hmm. You know, whatever, yeah. uh, well, you, uh, there's a pop of the vacuum of space, maybe mm-hmm. moon dust. Mm-hmm. And they get through all this stuff. They can identify the dirt. that the, But they never tell them if, 
because they're supposed to identify these wines. They never mm-hmm. tell them if they're right or wrong. Okay. Right. They just basically say, yeah, you know, you you did enough to become become certified or whatever they call it. Okay. So, so again, th- that subjectivity mm-hmm. that you're talking about, like like you don't know if they're good at it or not. And, and same thing with this audio. Like like people will say, uh, you know, I can uh, I can appreciate this or I can appreciate that, mm-hmm. but uh, it's that subjectivity. We don't you don't really know and. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I don't want to be like pretentious or the opposite of pretentious and say, well, yeah, I like my, I like my Budweiser, mm. or whatever. The, it's good enough for me. I mean, I like good quality sound. Yeah, of course. You, you know, but uh, but I, 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 there's a moment where I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of done splitting hairs with it. Sure. Yeah. 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 And that's where you get above that eighty percent. Yeah. You know, it's it's that's how I feel about it because the cost increases so quickly, as compared to the to the increase or the of quality. You know. Sure. But I mean, there's no. I've been a few things in my life where it's kind of like, no, I'm going to go and spend, you know. Yeah, like no, I, you're a bike guy. You spend more on your bike than <laughs> spend on my car. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, it's what you like, dude. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, you're going to look at my stereo gear and go, God dang, man, what the. Uh, well, because yeah. of the bike, I'll appreciate it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, so. so, so. Yeah. But on the digital side, I mean, there's no question. It's more convenient. There, There is no question. Right. Um, and then there's less noise, right? So there's no there's no artificial noise introduced. So when a needle is dragging through the groove, mm-hmm. if that groove is not perfectly clean or the needle's not perfectly clean, and then you'll get noise. You know, get little pops and hisses and right. whatever. And I'd be interested uh, the next time. That, well, anyway, for the for the sake of argument, when, next time you come to my house and I have the system that I want set up, mm-hmm. I would be curious for you to listen to a vinyl record. The way technology is nowadays. And I'd be curious to get your response I'm on, looking forward on, how, to on it. how quiet it actually is. Because uh, you and I are used to the days when you had a, a Burger King record player or something, right? And it was yeah. like, I and would, then music starts. Yeah, I look forward to it. Yeah, I, I, it's I, not that way anymore. I, I want that. Yeah. Uh, one of the one of the problems with us even taking this on is like the last time. We agree too much. <laughs> well, also with vinyl, I, I, well, I haven't owned a record player in uh, 35 years yeah okay i mean i've always you know as soon as you know cassettes were big i did cassettes you yep, know and, so yep. we, and I, honestly i think we need to bring those into the conversation because they were pretty awesome too well yeah so that's the thing man <laughs> it's like um it's like again back to the original point listen to what you're going to listen to on whatever you can right. do and enjoy it right and that's right. it so um but so CDs are a lot better than they used to be, just like everything really? else, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and the reason I say that is that the sound quality is... Um, so it's like it's like CDs, CDs nowadays uh, are essentially, if you relate it to the TV world, they're like in 4K, where back in the day they were, they were not. When they mm-hmm. first started producing CDs, they didn't have good enough technology and equipment to actually record them at, at as high a quality as they record them at now mm-hmm. so they're better now even back in the day i was buying gold cds instead mm-hmm. of aluminum so it's a piece of plastic right i remember now. that yeah and they covered in aluminum and then there's they put all the little things on there the aluminum particles don't lay as flat as gold yeah gold. i got the doors uh on first gold. album on gold yeah right and i got dark side of the moon and a couple others right but anyway, that was always the quest for better quality, right? Um, but so it is actually better now. Now, so digital is going to have a higher um, a dynamic range. Mm-hmm. And for somebody who doesn't know what a dynamic range is, if you ever take a picture on a digital camera, not on your phone, I think you might do it on some phones nowadays, but uh, digital cameras back in the day, they always showed you that little histogram, right? That funny little mm-hmm. little chart looking graph, bar graph type thing. Um, the finer you can split those lines so so if it's a one inch wide if you split that into two lines that's low fidelity right and you can split that into a hundred lines mm-hmm. you, you, you the gradients are are more fine right so that's mm-hmm. better quality so that's kind of what dynamic range is in, in the audio world uh, and they can actually get better dynamic range on cds now than they used to that's cool. and that was one of their big things that they touted when they first came out right better dynamic range than audio which this is where we move into that realm of like, hmm, kind of, but is that better? So right. technically, yes, quieter. Technically, yes, more dynamic range, but does it actually sound better? Mm-hmm. And then to me, it doesn't. And I've always noticed this about CDs. They always sounded, they sound like tinny, you know what I mean? They mm-hmm. sounded too sharp. And, and 
to be fair, that was probably my stereos that I was listening to them on. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's like, you know, what? I'm not spending a hundred dollars, you know? Right. But you, you just can't get any good gear for that. So, um, but then you talked about it and this is the, this is my big beef with digital and that's compression mm-hmm. and, and not the MP3 style of compression. I don't like that at all. Um, although again, super convenient cause you can fit 20,000 songs on your phone and carry them around right. if you want to, you know? Yep. Um, this podcast is becoming an MP3 just so I can upload it. Boing, just yeah. like that, yeah. Yep. But my my point is just that um, through the '80s we went through a little a little phase. Um, gosh, it was not that short. It's probably almost ten years worth, and it was the loudness wars. Yeah, and and engineers figured out that we could record things digitally and compress them and stack them, kind of like what the Beatles was doing with four tracks and eight tracks and all that. Um, and they could crank up the, the loudness because they compress the signal and you could make it louder without it distorting. And this is one of the reasons the old songs they didn't do that with. And that's why it's a little quieter when you're mm-hmm. listening to the back to back to back, you know. And um, I think what that did is that it kind of destroyed some of the fidelity of the music, the, the naturalness, the sound, the natural sound. I mean, you and I, short of Rush... There's Rush again. Mm -hmm. Comes up in every podcast. Um, (laughs) Short of Rush, you go watch a live band. They don't sound anything like the studio album. They don't sound nothing like it. You know, Rush is pretty freaking close, but everybody else. There's a few. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're way off, you know? Yeah. And that's the same type of deal. You you listen to a, a, a guy play a guitar on a street corner or in your living room or something. Doesn't sound like it does when it's recorded and compressed and a bunch of um, noise filters added to it. It becomes unnatural. And so that's my big kind of like stepping stone or argument point for, for the, the vinyl side. It's, it's warmer and it sounds more natural. Yeah. Well, uh, in my research, <laughs> all 50 minutes of it, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I know that uh, we t- the compression was a big deal. You know, I, I, I looked at, I try to find data and then I also, uh, you know, just did the typical, uh, typical Google search. I keep hitting the mic. Sorry, that was that. Was that. Ugh. So, so uh, the, the the there was all sorts of web pages that talked about why why most of them were were why vinyl or or analog is better than digital. And one thing, there, there was some stuff you're just kind of like, all right, whatever. Like, yeah. some people were, well, you know, it gives you an opportunity to collect things. And you're like, um, <laughs> I don't know. But, <laughs> well, record, okay, so let me just say this, though. It is, it, I'm sure, yes. There is an element of Of that. course. There is. No doubt. Yep. There's no doubt. There's There's that element, doesn't make yeah. it better, though. No, it no, think, no, yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah. people are like, yeah. oh, you know, going to a record store and, like, yeah. you know, two guys freaking yeah. talking about records yeah. in, in the most pretentious way possible. Yeah. It's yeah, so yeah, awesome. Yeah. I'm thinking... Okay, well, all right, uh, noted. But yeah. then there were they were they 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 talked about what one one argument I found was interesting, and I and I don't know if it's bullshit or not. But one person commented that analog is better if it was recorded analog. In other words, we do a lot of digital recording now, mm-hmm. and 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 so to record something digitally and then carry it over to vinyl, you know, you know, it's just it it's going to lose something sure. compared to a regular analog recording because <clears throat> because of what it is. And I find it super interesting. By the way, I find that you know the, the uh, just the, the conversations we have over and over and over again about how how you know things have kind of shifted from you know this organic way that we that life was now to this kind of kind of uh, synthetic, right? Yeah, and, and, yeah, and how you and I both. One of the things that makes that that I that I'm really coming to really appreciate is that we have a foot in both camps. Yes, you know we, we clearly like like our digital, but we clearly like our analog. Yes. You know, and and uh, we're kind of willing to defend and criticize both. But uh, uh, but they talked about how uh, that was a thing. How digital it was hard to like you know justify analog mm-hmm. or vinyl if it had, if it had been recorded digitally. Right. But uh, I think now not being a person that has any real super knowledge of the music industry it is just i just know from everything i understand that it's just very overproduced you know the whole autotune thing and yeah. and uh you know there were times we we we, we were dogging at the beatles in a previous podcast mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. and I, I i know some people might even send us hate or they're just going to be like i can't believe these guys are dogging the beatles out with that said i have no doubt these guys were in that that uh that recording studio and they were doing things with analog Mm -hmm. that was groundbreaking Mm -hmm. you know you know and and uh and so yes you know so 
there's something about you know them doing again that i'm gonna overuse this word this organic thing compared to somebody sitting at a, at a board you know turning a knob on a, mm-hmm. a device that that cleans up a person's voice you right. know what i mean so right. so that so i i just i just respect the the you know the the history you know more. yeah, yeah no so, no yeah. I, I get that it's interesting because you said a couple of things there that 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 um, sparked my interest and one is that um the auto-tune thing i don't know if you know but i interviewed that guy no the guy that invented it yeah you yeah. shut your mouth yeah, yeah. he's creepy Really? Yeah. Oh I, my God! I don't want to go any further, but that just. Oh, oh, I really uh, want you to go further, though, Doug. <laughs> Let's go to lunch. I'll, I'll, I'll tell like, you about it when we talk. When we go to lunch. Like he's like, I just want to tell you that I basically interviewed the guy who was in the the book the deposit gift. the book depository when JFK was shot. Can't get into it, but there's more to it than just one shooter. Just want to say that can't well, get into it you know, on this podcast. Once again, I don't think so, that guy would ever listen to this podcast. I understand. In case he does, I understand. I don't want to bag on the but guy. so I was talking. Talking to the individuals that were impo- responsible for the "quote unquote" Apollo Eleven landing, it's a little bit more complicated. Can't get into can't it. Get it. <coughs> Excuse me, but anyway, so yeah, let's just drop that. Yeah, no, that's fine. It's all auto tune. Yeah, um, so they yeah, had the auto tune thing, and then it's whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was it was not originally designed to be used the way it's being. No, used today, no, so. I, I understand that. Yeah, um, but the other thing you said is, uh, you know, analog is better if it's recorded in analog, and there's a, there's a, it just so happens. Um, where are we now? We're at the end of July. Yeah, in 2022, and um, there's a there's a there's a, uh, um, a let's call it the MoFi gate. Oh, Mo- MoFi is Mobile Fidelity, and it's a company, and they make very, very high quality records. And the way they do that is they take the original master tapes from the band, mm-hmm. and they um, bring them to their studio, and they record them onto really super high quality acrylics that y- they use to press the vinyl. And it's all like under high scrutiny and all of that stuff. And um, so they sell these things. They're expensive. You know, if you go out and buy a record right now at Target, which there's a big resurgence right now of vinyl, and I really think it's trendy. I think this is, it's not, yeah, whatever. For whatever reason, it's not a bad thing, but I think it's just a trendy deal. But um, anyway, so Mobile Fidelity makes these very, very high quality records. And so the audio files and and the audio nerds of the world, they seek these things out. And they, they spend lots of money. And t- to give you an example, lots of money. The newest ones that they're coming out with, uh, they're doing like all, coming up soon, they're doing like the first six, the first five maybe Van Halen albums. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, and, and they're 125 bucks per record. So that's a lot of money for a chunk of vinyl for music that you probably already own. If you're a Van Halen fan, you probably already own all that music. So well, now you're you, buying it again. Even if you go to Spotify, you can get all that stuff. For, yeah, yeah, for a couple even, bucks, right? Well, not yeah, for whatever you're paying for the month. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So anyway, um, there's, a big, there's a big controversy right now because um, at some point, the, the people that own these tapes stop letting Mobile Fidelity take the tapes with them to their, I don't know if they're in Georgia or something like that. Right, makes sense. Yeah, and they're, they're like, this shit's too valuable. They're you know priceless. I mean? Yeah, and so now Mobile Fidelity had to come up with a way to get that music and press it onto their acrylics. Mm-hmm. And so they came up, literally came up with their own digital uh, system to capture this music in the highest possible quality, zero compression, super, super high quality right. stuff. But the audio files are all pissed off now because it wasn't all 100% analog. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> it still sounds 10 times better than any record you got. Mm-hmm. you know. So anyway, I don't know if it's some sort of a quest for perfection from these people or they just need something to bitch about. But anyway, um, at the end of the day, again, back to that same old thing, man. It, it's even, it, not only is it subjective, but it's also situational. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you're gonna, you, you drive around in your car you hear traffic noise, you hear all the rest of that stuff. It's totally different than when right. you're sitting in a listening room, you know, this built specifically for that. So Yeah, and and uh and not it, many people do that, you no, know. So, yeah. it, it all kind of circles back around to what what you like. Yeah. I I guess what I always kind of want to avoid is is that uh that superiority thing, yeah, you know. Yeah, same here. Yeah, because because uh yeah, and, and and I don't know. I think we're all capable of it. Like yeah, having this kind of level of pretentiousness, you know. Mm, yeah, of course. But uh, but you, when you kind of identify it in yourself, you're like, you're like, oh my god, it makes me feel icky. Yeah. Well, I, I've actually figured out a way to get around that. This go this, for it. Talk about going off topic. Jeez. No, I love it. So um, 
let's take the record thing as an example. So I'm I'm spending a lot of effort and a lot of money to get this stereo system set up. And I would be pretentious if I just cranked this thing up in my house and listened to it and went like, oh, yeah, man, this sounds great. And anybody who asked me, I'd say, shit, my stereo sounds better than yours or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. A way around that is just to share it. Like, I want you to come over and listen to it and enjoy right. it, right? Like that's, right. So that's not me being pretentious. That's me like, this is something really cool, mm-hmm. and more people should experience it. So instead of me being an a-hole and just keeping it all to myself, I'm going to share it. I'll have as many people come over and listen as you want, you know? Um, mm-hmm. and, and so to me, that's kind of the way around that, because it allows other people to appreciate it without, you know, trying to stick your nose in the air. You know, it, uh, on that note, that's something you mentioned way Way off target here. Way off track. <laughs> well, we're already way off track. I know, but you mentioned the cycling thing. Uh-huh. I know, like, when I first started writing, you know, uh-huh. like, I would, uh, I used to joke around about, like, if, if my wife rode with me, mm-hmm. like, I would never give her advice. Like, while I, like, in other words, I would see her doing something. Right. And, uh, uh, and for me to say, oh, you know, you're in the wrong gear, or you need to do this, you need to do that. It just comes across as to her, you know, as me being a, a shithead, yeah, right? You're mansplaining, right? And I've gotten to the point now where, like, when I ride with people, like whatever bike they're on or whatever they're doing, if they're riding with me, freaking great. Do you I think, man? Yep. Don't say unless they ask. Yep. Because and, and and a lot of times people and and I want to be real clear here. I am no, I am no like you know lance armstrong yeah well mm-hmm. i'm definitely not lance armstrong because i never injected an epo in my body but <laughs> but i'm not a i'm not a piece of shit lying garbage person uh, oh wow <laughs> okay so how about the red Sox? <laughs> oh that's a whole nother podcast okay only because you brought it up and we got a few minutes just okay. real quick okay. the whole thing with him is uh, i think he was doping when everybody was doping but he also like right. ruined a lot of people's lives so that's what bothers me about Lance Armstrong. And he did was somewhat apologetic about it, but there's a people that probably still deserve an apology that he hasn't apologized to. Okay. I was kind of joking about calling him a piece of garbage. I would actually like to meet him. I probably would be, I'm sure I'd get along fine with him. With that said, uh, I'm no, I'm no expert at cycling. I just like to ride bikes. I ride a lot of bikes. I don't give people advice. I just let them form their own opinion on it. Like, whatever they want to do, they'll ask me, what kind of bike should I buy? I'm like, I'm not your guy. Mm-hmm. I'm not your guy to do that, okay? okay. I'm not your guy to, to guide you. I think you need to to find your own path. Mm-hmm. And I think when we talk about music, it's a lot like that, too. Like, like I will definitely show you what I think, okay? Right. So if there's you, an educational piece. Sure. Right. There is. Yep. But but that that is an educational piece upon request. Yes, and that's where it should stop. Yes. Yep, I'm on, with you. Yes, so... It's the same with audio stuff. Like, yeah. I, I mean, it's taken me a long time. Shit, man, I've read so many things and I've watched so many videos about it. And you, you glean information. You can tell some people are full of crap, right? right. You, know, you ignore it. So right. through all of that, I've, I've learned a lot, you know, and I've tested some of it. Like, mm-hmm. oh, this sounds better. This doesn't sound better. You know, I just. Right. Uh, and again, and we, back to the back to the incremental thing. I bought a new stylus for my record player mm-hmm. and it was 40 bucks. It wasn't the $480 one. Right. right? Same company. Right. Looks pretty much the same. Right. What's the difference? Oh. <laughs> In- incremental. Know? Yeah, right? incremental. Incremental. So, Very. Yeah. Uh, well, and yeah. in, in this is a possibility for future podcasts, something we often circle around uh, with is that, you know, and, and this has kind of been your opportunity. This is, but we could even drill down on this a little bit further that this is an area where you have, a, have some knowledge and you could definitely share it with people. You know, and, and and there's things that I have knowledge on that I can share with sure. people. So. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, but I'm curious. Well, here's one thing we're gonna do. This right. is this one thing that we'll do a follow up to this. Just a little brief a little okay. spot to a podcast is I want to get you to listen to really high quality stuff. And, oh, great. And just want to get your reaction to okay. it. That's all. And to see how you see how you, you react because I know I know the music that you like. You um, do. And I also want you. So I'll listen. I'll let you listen to that mm-hmm. on on high quality stuff. And then I also want to expose you to a couple other things, like the in the in one of the podcasts we talked about Nora Jones and mm-hmm. a couple of those. I'll let you hear some of that and and just uh, just to get you to experience it. You might not even like it, which is totally fine. But mm-hmm. uh, I think it's it's uh, is eye opening when you when you hear what music can actually do. Uh, it's yeah. crazy. It's it's yeah. First time I heard it, I was like, no freaking way. I've been listening to music my whole life. Right. Super, super passionate, in case you couldn't tell. Yeah. And then I heard this, and I'm like, holy crap. Whole new level, man. Well, that's, that. you know, uh, 
even if you were to place, I, like I know Nora, I'm no, no, I'm familiar mm-hmm. with the, the name Nora Jones. I, you would probably play me her like most popular mm-hmm. music, and I'd be like, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, most music people can play for me anything for the most part like play me like classical music which mm-hmm. I don't own any classical music or uh, you know anything like that even rap something like that mm-hmm. uh, a lot of times I can just appreciate it for what it is mm-hmm. you know and say oh yeah okay I get it very rarely do people play me things and I'm just like oh, that's I do not like that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and, and 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 it is it is usually very fringe. You know right. what I mean? It's very right. fringe when people right. play me stuff, and it's like some sort of atonal stuff. And I'm right. kind of like, right. I, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, no. I don't get it. You know? I'm with uh, you. But uh, so more, more often than not, I can I can appreciate it for what it's what, for the way it sounds. You know? So, yeah. but uh, but yeah, I look forward to that. I think that's yeah. a great idea. Should be good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I know that you're kind of in a transitional phase, but once you're kind of where you need to be, let's and you got everything set up. Well, definitely. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it, and then we'll yeah. do a little with a little reaction oh, yeah. thing. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yep. We definitely should revisit some of these topics. Yep. So, uh, cool. uh, and um, we're right around forty minutes. Yeah, yeah that's so, plenty. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, well, I, I thought this was going to be this was going to be like our because we talked about doing podcasts where we're a little bit more confrontational. I thought this was going to be a confrontational one. I had a few jokes well, written down. Yeah. Then well, you, get you, can, to use them. you can fire those off. I was going to say to you. So, so is it like the wax cylinder better than the final? <laughs> And did you go back and like listen to like a Mary had a lamp? I freaking uh, uh, and you're like God, I freaking I can't believe they put this by on Thomas vinyl. Edison. Yeah, they put <laughs> Thomas Edison on vinyl. It's so much more quality on the wax it's cylinder. It's way better. Yeah, it's uh, way better. You really, honestly, uh, I get the highs, I get the low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's much it's warmer. A beautiful mid range. <laughs> oh, dude, I swear to God, man, if you listen to these audio files, the, the language that they've come up with to try to describe, and it's hard. I, I get oh, that. It's hard. Like, it's, yeah. But the language that they've come up with to try to describe things like the quality or the or the resonance of the bass or the mid range, and all, yeah. it's like, oh my God. Same with wine. Like, yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like I was joking earlier, that's twenty seven ways to say fruity, right? And, right. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, I, I know when when you watch like a cooking show, mm-hmm. which I like I like a good cooking show as much as the next person, mm-hmm. they they avoid certain words. Like mm-hmm. they don't say that's tasty mm-hmm. or that's flavorful because right. what the hell does it's that really vague, mean? Yeah. yeah, what does that mean? So that, so they'll intentionally use wor- you know they they try to use words that are overly descriptive, but they kind of need to be in that yeah, environment. Yeah. But like I said, these these uh, these uh, wine these wine guys mm. uh, that whole thing when I said tennis balls, I actually heard a guy in a and a wine mentioned that the wine had a taste of like a, op- a freshly opened tennis ball container. Wow. Like, and I'm just like, I'm just like, uh, fuck, that doesn't sound tasty for one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, our garden tastes like a water from a garden hose or something like that. <laughs> and I know what that tastes like, but. <laughs> we, that's but, how we drink when we were so, kids. <laughs> so real quick, I got to, I, I, I <laughs> this is on the wine thing. We're, oh, it's off topic. Yeah. <laughs> This is your, we should know, change the name of the podcast to topic, not topic. Yeah, maybe this one will be that, but 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 uh, we got a little a little filler. I I recently without without you know giving away too much, I recently went to like a winery with some family and the, the, you know some extended family, and they opened a bottle of wine, and everybody's tasting it. And, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, I I, I like what I like, you know. Yeah, sure. And I think probably if I was actually even even try to quantify it, like for things like certain alcohols, I'm no expert, but I'm also uh, no novice, like mm-hmm. novice. I can mm-hmm. drink something and say mm-hmm. that's good, that's bad, but mm-hmm. but I can't get into the the, the a real detailed flavor profile, mm-hmm. all the nuances. Yeah, yeah, but wine, not a clue. Yeah. Okay, I'm not a wine drinker. All right, I like beer, I like certain uh, spirits, but so so they give me this wine. And everybody's drinking it, and people are going like, "Well, you know, I'm getting this, I'm getting that." I, I and and what I said was not, uh, I wasn't bullshitting, <laughs> but I said, uh, I said, I said, I'm getting a hint of basil, okay. <laughs> and the woman looked at me like I said it tasted like piss, okay. Literally, <laughs> she, she was like. Fucking basil? Get out. There's no fucking basil in that. I'm thinking, I'm just tasting a little basil. I mean, <laughs> what's that? You got Is some that between the, your teeth. From I was dinner. like, I know. I was like, it's just a little basil I don't know. And I thought she was going to, and she, oh. Yeah, yeah. I was like, just calm down. Maybe not. 
Yeah. I, you know, but... but there, I had that experience in the coffee world. Some coffee master. And, yeah. You know, I did a lot of that coffee tasting. I had this similar experiences a couple of times. It's yeah. Like, Jeez, cool your jets, dude. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I remember you and I having conversations about coffee when you yeah. when you were previous, previously employed. Coffee is another one of those things where I have a very... I have a pretty uh, a philistine flavor. I mean, I'm not a guy that drinks uh, Folgers, but right. but uh, but it does. I it can be a lot of different stuff, and I'm not too crazy. Some people are very very. Well, I, about their I just happen to be knowledgeable about it. Right. I, I kind of I drink Folgers every day at work because yeah, that's yeah. what they have. Right. I mean, I, it's not my favorite, but it's sure. still coffee. I drink it, but but um, yeah, no, the we will do coffee tasting. That'll be fun. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Co- I, coffee is. Coffee, I like like a like a I coffee serves a purpose in my life. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, I so, hear you. I hear but, you. But uh, this is a fun one. Uh, we we've done this with a couple other sets of friends, and you do coffee and food pairings, and coffees from around the world mixed with different kinds of foods. And yeah. you, I mean, when we do this, you can definitely tell the difference. But uh, but anyway, yeah. So back on the audio stuff, man. At the end of the day, it's it's all. I mean, you could split the hairs as far as you want. I mean, yeah. Do you like jazz or you like rock and roll? If you like rock and roll, do you like heavy rock? You know, do you like light rock? Do you like yacht rock? Whatever. And mm. you like guitars? Do you like Steve Vai's guitar? Do you like Eddie Van Halen's guitar? Tone, fatness, all that stuff, you know, Nugent, mm. who do you like? And so it's that's to me that really and truly is what it all comes down to. And my quest for the knowledge and all of that is really for self enjoyment. It's not mm-hmm. it's not at all about, you know, trying to, to keep up with the Joneses or trying to one up the neighbor or any of that kind of stuff. It's just about um, I just get so much enjoyment out of music, and it's so personal that yeah. that, that's where my quest comes from. I will say that, yeah, music is an important part of my life. It always kind of shocks me when I'm a, ask somebody like what kind of music they listen to, and they're like, I don't really listen to music. It's like, I know. it's like, it's like you know, you know, it's almost like saying I like to live without vision. Yeah, it's almost like yeah, in a two dimensional world. Yeah, I, I don't know why you would. Want, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, I actively. It, it, I think you mentioned one time, like when you need to get in a good mood, you listen to Boston, oh, for totally. example. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, I get yeah. that. Like, I, yeah. like I, on my way to work, there's times that I'm like, I need, a, I need something that's going to yeah. go and get the day started. Yeah, you know? I can, I can literally mold my mood. Yeah, based on what music I choose. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. I do not get it when people are, or, or, mm. or they have such, a, such a, uh, just kind of a nonchalant. Yeah. You know, yeah, I have, a, you know, I got my radio on like top forty pop, blah right. blah blah. And I'm thinking, wow. You yeah, know, so I'm with uh, you. yeah, so and it's the same. It's the same for me with like the difference between, like I, I'm a lyrics guy. I like right. to listen to lyrics because lyrics I, I, in my mind, I mean, it, it's hard to write music, mm-hmm. right? But music is really, if it has lyrical content, it's poetry put to music, right? So the, right. that's half of it, or you know, whatever, a big portion of it. Mm-hmm. And so to me, that's important. And I, some people are like, oh no, I just like the melody, and I'm like, what? Right. You know, so yeah, anyway, so, yeah. To, so. And some of the music nowadays is a proof that we're coming to the end of our existence. So, <laughs> yes, so. exactly. All right, so Bob Dylan. Uh, do you have uh, well, even Bob Dylan? I mean, I take Bob Dylan over some of the stuff today, and that's saying a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so all right, all right. So end do, it there. Do you have any recommendations for oh, me? Uh, let's see. I'll tell you what. I'll start. Yeah, and go. that way you can come. You can think about. It. Okay. So, this is actually a band that's uh, broken up, uh, but they, they came out in. Uh, First song was released in 2017. It was uh, the name of the band is called Sons of Texas. Mm-hmm. Familiar with them? Mm-mm, okay, not at all. Uh, so yeah, they, they released like two albums and an EP stuff like that. They're from McAllen, Texas, which is right along the border, uh, and uh, it is like a like kind of old school uh, metal, uh, oh. but but with kind of a kind of a uh, Texas texas vibe uh they recorded their last album uh in san antonio i believe but uh, if you're going to listen to them i would recommend uh the song beneath the riverbed uh okay. which would actually which actually references rio grande uh so so yeah pure rock uh just very very heavy chunky uh guitar driven rock uh they have one video i watched one video on youtube uh that they put out and you could tell it looked like it was probably filmed on an iphone uh which made it all that much better so again sons of texas uh, beneath the riverbed, it's strapping. It is. It is. Uh, it is hard driving rock. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff I like. Yep. Um, I again, fully unprepared for this. I need to get better about the recommendation thing. But um, I would say, if I had to recommend anything, check out on YouTube. Check out the new stage um, in Roger Waters' latest tour. He he was going to start this tour for COVID, and but just before COVID, and that all hit, so he he didn't do it. Uh, the new record is called This Is Not a Drill. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gets very political. 
uh, and makes no bones about it. And in fact, the first thing he says in the concert is, hey, you know, get ready, take your seats, the show's about to start. And one more thing, if you're one of those people who likes Pink Floyd but don't like Roger Waters' politics, then you're kindly invited to fuck off. Mm-hmm. So he's, you know, he's he's very passionate about it. But anyway, uh, that aside, the the stage that they develop for this is insane. Mm-hmm. It's a giant, and I mean giant, cross. Uh, and hanging above that cross to mirror the cross is a video screen set up in the form of a cross in a, you know, typical Pink Floyd type style Mm -hmm. they're showing lots of crazy images and stuff and it is uh it's almost overwhelming um so check it out and and if he comes to your to your city or whatever if you're a pink floyd roger waters fan definitely be a show worth checking out nice so that was a good recommendation yeah pretty cool fun stuff Uh, Great. So thanks again for joining us at this podcast. Uh, We're breaking for lunch. Yeah, it's off time to go to lunch. Uh, so, uh, all, again, always means a lot to us to have uh, people out there listening to what we're, what we're putting together. Uh, always looking for ideas. So you can email us, analogspectrum at gmail.com. Uh, tweet at us at, at Analog Spectrum on Twitter or follow us on Facebook. Uh, always consider following us. Following us help out, helps out quite a bit, and also uh, sharing us, share us with your friends and your and your mates and all that. And we're going to keep building this uh, building this podcast. We're not looking for a whole bunch of people listening to us, but it's always nice to make friends and so forth through this podcast. And that's all I got. You have a great day. See ya. This is Analog Spectrum. Get ready for a verbal beatdown to that overripe honeydew. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Okay. I'm glad you like that one. Oh man, that's that's something. It's visual. <laughs> oh my god. That's funny. See if you can get through that one. Yes.